Welcome back, everybody, to the EKG uh, of the day. My name is Reed. If you enjoy this content, please feel free to subscribe. Let's get started. So I'm going to start off by taking a look at the forest and the trees of the forest are my QRSs. And so if I come down here to lead two, I'm going to notice I've got a wide, complex, regular, but very slow uh, rhythm here. And if I start here, I see this rhythm kind of ends on the solid line. And so if I check my rate, we've got how many big boxes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine big boxes. And so I can calculate my rate to be 300 divided by my number of big boxes, which is nine. So that equals, I'm not going to do the full long division here, but that equals something a little bit greater than 30, so maybe 31 beats per minute. So we have a bradycardia, and so I've got a wide complex bradycardia here. Let's see what is going on down our rhythm. So I'm going to start off with atrial activity. I'm going to look in front of these QRSs, and I notice I don't see any P waves here in the rhythm strip. Let's take a look at other leads. Lead one, I don't see anything, and lead AVF, nothing. And if you see, there's some baseline uh, electrical activity going on here. You can see in V1, it's almost organized, but it's not perfectly organized. I would say in the absence of any distinct P waves and with some type of just small amplitude little waves here, I would call this atrial fibrillation because in this case the atria is not organized and these are all fibrillatory waves that are not perfectly organized they appear to be and this would maybe be um, you, know, you might ask well how are you going to call this atrial fibrillation I thought atrial fibrillation needed to be irregularly irregular and so Let's take a look at why we can still have atrial fibrillation with a regular rhythm. And so if you take a look at this rhythm, this QRS is wide. The QRS duration is greater than 120 milliseconds. So this is a wide QRS. And that QRS axis is, let's see, it is positive in AVR. It is negative in 1 is negative in AVF. So what does this tell me? That means my QRS axis is going up and to the right. So that is extreme axis deviation. And so that extreme axis deviation is telling me that perhaps this wide complex QRS that we're seeing is a ventricular escape rhythm. And we know the ventricular escape rhythms occur at a rate of roughly 20 to 40 beats per minute. We also know that these are wide because they do not take the Hisperkinji highway system from the AV node. Because what is occurring right now is this person has atrial fibrillation with a complete or third degree heart block. And how do I know that? Well... If their AV node was working, so say I had my heart, I'm going to draw a quick diagram of a heart here. Say my AV node was working, I should be getting signal that goes down into the ventricles, right? And so this is my, my atria up here. Here's my AV node, his Purkinje. And so what should happen is we've got these atrial fibrillatory waves here in green that are bouncing around. And occasionally, they're going to bump into my AV node, and the AV node should take that signal and conduct it down into the ventricles. And this happens irregularly irregular in that kind of fashion. Well, in this case, we have a very organized rhythm. It is regular, occurring, on time. It is slow, 31 beats per minute, and it's wide. And so we can infer that because of that, none of these fibrillatory waves are getting down into the ventricles. And we know that because we've got extreme axis deviation that is going up and to the right. So it's starting from somewhere down here in the ventricles and depolarizing up and to the right. And on top of that, 
we've got this baseline fibrillation. And so what's our rhythm? We've got atrial fibrillation with a third degree heart block. This person is in deep, deep trouble and they need a pacemaker ASAP. So I hope this helps and have a great day.